would behold twixt my extremes and me, this bloody knife will play the umpire arbitrating that which the commissions in thy years continual issue of true honor bring. <laughs> Be not so long to speak. I long to die if what thou speak, speak not of remedy. Hold, daughter. I do spy a kind of hope which craves as desperate an execution as that which is desperate which we would prevent. If rather than to marry County Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then is it likely that thou wilt undertake a thing like death to chide away this shame that copes with death himself to escape from it? If thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from off the battlements of any tower, or bid me go into a new-made grave and hide me with a dead man in a shroud. Things that to hear them told it made me tremble. I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. Hold in. Go home. Be merry. Give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, look that thou lie alone. Let not the nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial. Being then in bed in this distilling liquor, drink thou off. When presently through all thy veins are on a cold and drowsy humor, for no pulse shall keep his native progress but surcease, no warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. The roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade to paley ashes, the eyes' windows fall like death when he shut up the day of life, and each part depraved of supple government shall stiff and stuck and cold appear like death. And then in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou wilt continue two and forty hours, and then awake as from a pleasant sleep. When the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, fair art thou dead. Then as the manner of our country is, in thy best robes uncovered on the bier, be borne to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, shall Romeo by my lattice know our drift, and hither shall he come, and he and I will watch thy waking, and that very night will he bear thee hence to Mantua. And this shall free thee from this present shame, if no inconstant toy nor womanish fear abate the valor in the acting of it. Give me, give me, or tell not me of fear. Oh, then, be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I'll send a friar with speed to Mantua with my letters to thy lord. Love, give me strength, and strength shall help afford. Farewell, dear father. What should she do here? 
My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come by. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then tomorrow morning? No. No, this shall forbid it. Lie down there. What if it be a poison which the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead, lest in this marriage he should be dishonored because he married me before to Romeo? I fear it is. <coughs> and yet, methinks it should not, for he has still been tried a holy man. How if, when I am laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me, there's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault, to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere by Romeo comes? Oh, if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place? Is it a vault, an ancient receptacle, wherefore this many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed? Where bloody Tybalt, yet but green and earth like festering in his shroud, where, as they say, at some hours in the night spirits resort. Alack, alack, is it not like I so early waking? What with loathsome smells and shrieks like mandrakes torn out of the earth, the living mortals hearing them run mad? Oh, if I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all these hideous fears, and, and madly play with my forefather's joints, and pluck the mangled Tybalt from his shroud, and in a rage with some great kinsman's bones as if a cloud dash out my desperate brains. Oh, look. Methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo that did spit his body upon a rapier's point. Stay, Tybalt! Stay! Romeo! Thee drink! I drink to thee. If I may trust the flattering truth of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. Ah oh, me, how sweet is love itself possessed, when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. Uh, news from Verona. <coughs> how now, Balthazar? Dost thou not bring me letters from the friar? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How fares my Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capel's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her lay low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. Oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it from my office, sir. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars. Thou knowest my lodging. Get me ink and paper and hire post horses. I will hence tonight. I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do afford some misadventure. Touch thou art deceived. Leave me and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. No matter. Get thee gone, and hire those horses. I'll be with thee straight. Well, Juliet, 
I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for me. Oh, mischief! Thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary, and hereabouts he dwells. Noting this penury to myself, I said, And if a man should need a poison now, whose sale is present death in Mantua, here lives a cake of wretch would sell it him. Oh, this same thought did but forrun my need, and this same needy man must sell it me. But I remember, this should be the house. Being holiday, the beggar's shop is shut. What ho! Apothecary! Who calls so loud? Come hither, man. I see thou art poor. Hold. There is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison, such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins, that the life weary taker may fall dead. Such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness and fierce to die? Famine is in thy cheeks, need and oppression starveth in thine eyes, contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. Then be not poor, but break it and take this. My poverty, but not my will, consents. I paid thy poverty and not thy will. Put this in any liquid thing you will and drink it off. And if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold, worse poison to men's souls, doing more murder in this loathsome world than these poor compounds thou mayst not sell. I sell thee poison. Thou hast sold me none. Farewell. Buy food and get in flesh. Come, cordial and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave, for there must I use thee. Holy Franciscan friar, brother Ho, the same should be the voice of friar John. Welcome from Mantua. What says Romeo? Or if his mind be writ, give me his letters. Going to find a barefoot brother out, and finding him, the searchers of the town, suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, Sealed up the doors, would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Well, who bear my letters then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again. Nor can a messenger to bring it thee, so fearful would they of infection. Unhappy fortune! By my brotherhood, this letter was not nice, but full of charge and dear import, and the neglecting of it may do much danger. Friar John, get me an iron crow, bring it straight unto my cell. Brother, I'll go and bring it thee. Now must I to the monument alone. Within these three hours will fair Juliet wake. Out she will beshrew me much that Romeo hath no notice of these accidents. But I will write again to Mantua and keep her at my cell till he comes. Poor living corse, closed in a dead man's tomb. thy torch, boy, hence and stand aloof. Yet put it out, for I would not be seen. Under yon yew tree lay thee all along, holding my ear close to the hollow ground. So shall no foot upon the churchyard tread, but thou shalt hear it whistle then to me. Give me those flowers. Do as I bid thee go. I'm almost afraid to stand alone here in the churchyard, yet I will adventure. Sweet flower with flowers, thy bridal bed I strew. Oh, woe, thy canopy is dust and stones, which with sweet water nightly I will do. 
or wanting that with tears distilled by moans, the obsequies that I for thee will keep nightly shall be to strew thy grave and weep. The boy gives warning, something doth approach. What cursed foot wanders this way tonight to cross my obsequies at true love's right? What with the torch? Muffle me night a while. Hold. Take this letter. Early in the morning, see thou delivered to my lord and father. Give me the light. Upon thy life I charge thee, whate'er thou hearest or seest, stand all aloof, and do not interrupt me in thy course. Why I descend into this bed of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to take thence from her dead finger a precious ring, a ring I must use in dear employment. Therefore, hence, away! But if thou, jealous, dost return to prime what I further shall intend to do, by heaven I will tear thee joint by joint, and strew this hungry churchyard with thy limbs. I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. So shalt thou show me friendship. Take thou that. Live, and be prosperous. Farewell, good fellow. For all this same, I'll hide me hereabout. His looks I fear, and his intents I doubt. Thou detestable moor, thou womb of death, gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth. This is that banished haughty Montague that murdered my love's cousin. I will apprehend him. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. I must indeed, and therefore came I hither. Good, gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Think upon these gone, let them affright thee. Stay not, leave. Oh, I beseech thee, youth, put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone. By heaven, I love thee better than myself. For I come hither armed against myself. Stay not, be gone, live. And hereafter say a madman's mercy, bid thee run away. I do defy thy conjuration, and apprehend thee for a felon here. Wilt thou provoke me? Then have at thee, boy. My wife, 
Death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty's end is in yet as crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks. And death's pale flag has not advanced it there. Tybalt, liest thou there in thy bloody sheet? Oh, what more favor can I do to thee than with that hand that cut thy youth in twain to sunder his that was thine enemy? Oh, forgive me, cousin. Oh, Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous? And that the lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Oh, here, here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest, and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world weary flesh. Eyes. Look your last. Arms, take your last embrace. And lips, oh you, the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss, a dateless bark unto engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct. Come, unsavory guide. Thou desperate pilot, now at once run on the dashing rocks, thy seasick, weary bark. Here's to my love. <clears throat> oh, true apothecary, thy drugs are quick. Thus with the gifts I die. And my old feet stumble their graves. Who's there? Here's one, a friend, and one that knows you well. Bless me upon you. Tell me, good my friend, what torch is yon that vainly lends his light to grubs and eyeless skulls? As I discern it burneth in the Capel's monument. It doth so, holy sir, and there's my master, one that you love. Who is it? Romeo. How long hath he been there? Full half an hour. Go with me to the void. I dare not. My master knows not that I am gone hence, and fearfully didn't menace me with death if I did stay and look upon his intent. Stay, then I'll go alone. Oh, fear comes upon me, much I fear some ill and lucky thing. As I did sleep under this yew tree here, I dreamt my master in another fought, and that my master slew him. Romeo! What blood is this which stains the stony entrance of this sepulchre? What means these masterless and gory swords to lie discolored in this place of peace? Romeo! nest of death contagion and unnatural sleep. A greater power than we can contradict have thwarted our intents. Come, thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead in Paris too. Come, I'll dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. No, stay not to question, for the watch is coming. Come, go, good 
good Juliet, I dare no longer stay. Go, get thee hence, for I will not away. What's here? A cup closed in my true love's hand? <coughs> And I see hath been his timeless end. Oh, churl! Drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me after. How uh, kiss thy lips? Haply some poison yet doth hang on them to let me die with the restorative. <laughs> 